Hello everyone, I'm Alana, and welcome back to our channel. Today, I am through one of America's oldest cities, Boston in the state of Massachusetts. The official name for Boston is City of Boston. It is the capital and most populous city of Massachusetts. A lot of history, money, and power can be found in this city in the United States. Every year, the city attracts 22.7 million visitors, including 2.7 million international visitors, making it one of the 10 most popular tourist spots in the country. From the cobblestone streets that echo with history to the vibrant cultural hubs, Boston is an amalgamation of the past and the present. There will be timestamps below, which will let you move from one place to another. Our first stop is Boston Common, the oldest park in the United States, opened in 1634. It's 20 hectares in size, or 50 acres. The sprawling green space has witnessed major historical events, and today serves as a peaceful retreat in the heart of the city. Take a look at the Declaration of Independence. After it was written on July 4, 1776, it was read here to the people of Boston. You can also look at the figure of George Washington while you're here. Lots of different ducks can be seen in the ponds nearby. There's second open space. The public garden are almost one place, with only Charles Street sitting between them. The public garden was started by the generous Horace Gray in 1837. It was the first botanical garden in the country. Most people come to see the swan boats, which you can ride on the big pond. Next, we meander down Newbury Street, a paradise for shoppers and foodies alike. Located in Boston's downtown Back Bay, it feel like you're in Europe. Lined with 19th century buildings, this street is a blend of high-end boutiques, mostly trendy shops and stores, art galleries and cafes and restaurants with sidewalk patios. There are beautiful houses from the 1800s all along this one-mile street. The path goes from the Boston Public Garden to Brookline Avenue. The architecture in the neighborhood is very different, but there are some beautiful examples of brickwork and decorative clay. A really popular spot for people to visit because it has hundreds of shops and restaurants, making it a popular spot for both tourists and locals. They have high-end shops. It feels more like a neighborhood, but it's a famous spot that you should definitely remember and check out while you're in Boston. Now, let's head to Boston Harbor. It was built in 1718 and is the oldest lighthouse in the country. It's also a national historic landmark. People think that the Graves Light is the highest in the country. There are 34 islands and peninsulas in the Boston Harbor Islands National Recreation Area. You can get on the Odyssey at Rose Wharf and take a trip through Boston Harbor. You can also rent a boat at Long Wharf that will take you out into harbor and show you around. With a Boston whale watching cruise and see humpback and fin whales, dolphins, and porpoises in the wild. The seventh one is Beacon Hill, with its gaslit streets and federal style row houses, is our next stop. It's on top of the hill and has a view of the city. It's like stepping into a Charles Dickens novel. The neighborhood's charm is accentuated by its antique shops and the iconic Acorn Street, one of the most photographed streets in America. The South Side has long been home to Boston's old money families, who are called Brahmins in the area. At the western side of Beacon Hill, Charles Street is lined with small shops and stores that have long served the area and are also popular with tourists. The North Side is much less fancy. Since the early 1800s, immigrants, including a large African-American group, have lived there. It was the first place in Massachusetts to be officially named a historic district in 1955. The Massachusetts State House is a must-see. It was built in 1798. People can look around the building and see the famous gold-domed roof, as well as displays and items from the past. There are a lot of old shops on Charles Street, and Acorn Street is one of the most photographed streets in the U.S. No trip to Boston is complete without visiting Harvard University. As we walk through the historic campus, we're walking in the footsteps of some of the world's most brilliant minds. 
The architecture here tells a story of academic excellence and profound history. Harvard University was formed on September 8, 1636. It's the oldest university in the U.S. The main campus is in Harvard Yard on the site in Cambridge. You could spend hours walking around the park's walks and admiring the old red brick buildings with their carved arches and tall, narrow windows. Or you could go to free tours by foot and get a free tour with a guide. Fifth place goes to sports enthusiasts Fenway Park. It opened in 1912. Home of the Boston Red Sox, it's the oldest ballpark in Major League Baseball. The Boston Red Sox have played their home games at this field for more than 100 years. The Green Monster is what makes this baseball park famous. It's a 37-foot-tall wall in left field. There is also a clock that is one of the last of its kind in the U.S. and is controlled by hand. The park still has some old-school baseball features, like a scoreboard that you have to manually run. It also has the fewest seats in the big teams, with only 33,000 seats available. Because of this, tickets are very hard to come by. It's best to go to a game, but a walk of the park is fun and interesting even if you're not into sports. Back to history with the Freedom Trail, a 2.5-mile long path through downtown Boston that passes 16 locations significant to the history of the United States. In Boston Common Park is where the red-painted or brick-lined path on the city's sidewalks begin. To find your way, just look for the line of red bricks in the path and the tracks where you cross the street. It links 16 important places, such as Old Granary Burying Ground, King's Chapel Burying Ground, Old State House and Boston Massacre to the Old South Meeting House. Going through Boston's North End, the Freedom Trail goes by the Paul Revere House and the Old North Church. It finishes in Charlestown, across the bridge. Next is a one-of-a-kind historical site in Boston. At the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum, we're not just observers, we're part of the story. This interactive museum brings the famous 1773 protest to life. An angry Bostonian crowd, protesting taxes on goods sent to the colonies, swarmed ships from England on the night of December 16, 1773, more than a year before the first fight of the American Revolution. The Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum has full-size models of the ships that the Sons of Liberty dumped tea off of. And of course, everyone can throw tea into the water and feel the revolutionary spirit that sparked a nation's birth. Next is the Old North Church, a beacon of American liberty. Built in 1723, this church is more than just a house of worship. It was here, in the steeple of Old North, where two lanterns were hung as a signal on the eve of the battles of Lexington and Concord. The famous phrase, one if by land and two if by sea, originates from this very spot, a signal to alert patriots about the movement of British troops. Inside, the church's beauty is understated yet profound. One of the most fascinating aspects is its role in the community over the centuries. The church not only witnessed the revolution, but also adapted and served through different eras, maintaining its significance in Boston's narrative. It's rich in Italian heritage. This neighborhood offers a striking contrast to the church's colonial roots. You can feel the spirit of those who dared to dream of a better future. Coming at number one is Faneuil Hall and Quincy Market. Faneuil Hall has been a marketplace and a meeting hall since 1742, while Quincy Market is a feast for the senses with its array of food stalls and vibrant atmosphere. Faneuil Hall was built by Huguenot businessman Peter Faneuil in 1740 as a market hall. The hall is a famous market and meeting space right in the middle of downtown Boston. There are still market stands on the ground floor. On the top floors, there is a council room. The ancient and honorable artillery museum is on the fourth floor. The nearby the marketplace has three long rooms that were built in the early 1800s and are now home to many shops, restaurants, and art shows. It has been an important part of American history. 
Today, Faneuil Hall is a famous place for tourists to visit for shopping, eating, and cultural activities. And the famous Quincy Market was planned by famous builder Alexander Paris at the time, and it was first used as a hub for delivering food to people in the city. This old market building was built between 1824 and 1826 and is in the historic center of the city. People can look around the busy indoor market hall, which has a courtyard in the middle and two floors of shops and restaurants around it. There are also a lot of outdoor plazas and gardens around the market that provide more places to eat and relax. Without a doubt, you need to check this place out. It's a place that tells the story of America. Visit our website, ushistorians.com. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through Boston. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more travel adventures. Until next time, keep exploring and make your own history.